Hello and welcome back to another Take Refuge 3D tutorial video with me, Peter. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video on the process of um, making a plasticity CAD model into a game object. Now, it works, and it's just quite a laborious process, so much so that somebody commented conclusion if you want a good low poly game ready asset get ready to suffer and i agree it is a pain in the ass now somebody else also commented i also find if you bring angons into a texturing program they can be removed or deleted or at least this occurs in marmoset good video audio might be a little bit quiet I had to really bump up my volume to hear the video. Now I'm going to try and address both of these problems in this new add-on that I made. It's called N-Gone. You get it? N-Gone? So basically it gets rid of N-Gones on and makes them ready for texturing software or ready for game engines. So it's a one-click asset optimization designed for preparing Engon, I spelt that wrong there, uh, based assets ready to use in game engines, marmoset, substance, etc. It takes a rather time-consuming and annoying process and condenses it into one click. Well, technically it's more than one click, but one click sounds better and it's close enough to one click to call it one click. No more wrangling with topology. Just get straight to baking your normals. We can also can also be used to create naming conventions used in texturing software. This is a free for personal use add-on for Blender I made on my own time. Please consider donating the price of a coffee if you find this useful. It's for free. You can plug in zero. You don't have to pay. But please consider donating the price of a coffee if you find this useful. useful. In Australia, the price of a coffee is $350, so uh, please consider that. No, I'm joking. $2, dollar, whatever, free, you buy it. If you're buying it for a studio, you work for a company, it's $15. That's non-negotiable because I think this is such a time saver that um, it's worth that price. Um, I made this to speed up my own flow. I hope it can help yours too. It's not free from companies, blah, 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 blah. So this is it, and this is basically what it does. It takes an Angon mesh, you can create a low poly. It takes an Angon mesh, you can create a high poly. So the Angon is Angon. Okay, so we'll go back to Blender. Okay, and as you can see, we've got our, this is our high poly. You, Look at our wireframe, it's relatively dense. And this is our low poly. We've got some shading errors already, but it's still not low poly enough. And it's also um, ingons. So if you look at this, uh, actually, if we look at it in edit mode um, and you go to places like, I don't know where I can find one. It does a pretty good job with quads in places. But yeah, you get angons like that. So what my add-on does is let's go over here. Angon one-click asset optimization. Okay, so first of all, we want to give this a name. We'll call it gun turret. Okay, and we'll rename it. They'll rotate the object if needed. When it comes in from plasticity, it comes in at a different uh, uh, Z direction so that will we go one that'll bring us back to what we had in plasticity originally okay and then we want to go create low poly what this does is adds a tri triangulate modifier a decimate modifier set to 35% you can change that and a data transfer modifier and what the data transfer modifier does is it gets rid of shading errors created by the triangulate modifier so if we turn that off that's what we're left with so this is basically ready to export it's also changed the name to give it the underscore low suffix okay so we can hide this collection because there's a linked duplicate down here 
Now, solid number nine, we want to rename it to gun turret as well. Okay. I want to turn that back on. And we'll turn our low poly off. Rotate object if needed. It's been rotated. You can see that this is a much more dense smash, still full of Vengons. Um, so we've got this named and we want to click create high poly. This does flag an error. Don't worry about the error. It doesn't hurt the code. I'll get that fixed at some point. This is the 0.1 version. It still works. This does the exact same. Renames it. The gun turret underscore high. Um, and adds a data transfer and a triangulate modifier. So uh, it doesn't add the decimate this time because this is the one that we'll be using for baking. So we want it as detailed as possible. If we turn off our data transfer modifier, you will see these shading errors and they will show up in your bake if you don't have the data transfer modifier. So now we've also got a file called backup, which just creates uh, hidden uh, versions of our original mesh. Okay, so if you, you need a backup, we can just hide that as well. So we'll turn these two back on. Okay, so we've got these, they're sitting on top of each other pretty well. Okay, we'll select them both. I'm going to export uh, FBX and I'm just going to put this somewhere. Just give me a second. Uh, I'll put this in test and we're going to call this gun turret test. Okay. Uh, dot FBX. So we're going to export that. And the final thing that we want to do, now I might add a button for this as well, to do it automatically, but that's going to hide my high poly. I'm going to open this up. You can see the shading errors once you go into edit mode. And I'm going to unwrap this and I'm going to do a smart UV project. If you're doing a hero asset, you want to spend some time on your UVs. This is not a UV tutorial. It's going to go into UV editing mode and I'm going to pack these. Give it a second. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, packing done. Alright, probably not a perfect pack. There probably will be artifacts. So, this is just a quick tutorial. Okay, so if I was going to be doing this, um, I'll put a different mat cap on. If I was going to be doing this um, for a proper bake, like you'll see in this photo that I'm going to put on the screen now, I separated these details into a single object, all of these cameras into a single object, the arm into a single object. I think I included this in this object. And um, I then also used vertex colors um, to um, create the um, uh, different aspects of this. You'll see it in the render that's on the screen now. Um, now I'm going to go and I'm going to select both my gun turret high and my gun turret low at the same time. I'm going to export as an FBX. Can't remember if I ever did this. Oh yeah, I already did this. So we're going to call this gun turret test FBX. So now we'll go into Marmoset. So we're going to start a new scene and we'll just call it A. Okay, we're going to add a baker in. We're going to come down to our bake project one. We're going to go to the quick loader and we're going to go load. We're going to go gun turret test. What this will do, if we've done everything correctly, is it'll bring in this gun turret file and it's already hidden our high poly. Okay, we've got our UVs on this guy. And all going well. Okay, we'll bring our default material onto here. We'll go up to our bake project. Let's set it to 4K, 4096, 4096. And we'll click bake. I'll just delete these two because these were tests. And we're going to call this uh, bake turret. 
Okay, we'll save this. And we're going to turn AO on as well. And all going well. Just checking in Blender that we did our export correctly. No, we did. Um, Marmoset. So we're going to click this preview button and see what happens. Fingers crossed. Wonderful. Okay, we'll click on that default. All right, even these details came out all right. Now you can see some little artifacts down here and stuff like that. If we separated these out, those wouldn't really exist. Some artifacts in here. But, um, wonderful. So you can click normal, turn it off. You can see the original. And we'll turn our occlusion and bring that down a little bit. We'll give our albedo a color. Just to reiterate what we got in the end. Okay, we got we ended up with these two objects. We didn't have to rotate the object. We didn't have to add the modifiers. We didn't have to manually rotate the object. We didn't have to add, um, name the modifiers. We didn't have to double click to rename. Um, everything was done for us. As long as you just do everything in the correct order, it will all work. Okay, and I recommend using a new file for this. Um, but yeah, it, it it does the trick and it turns a 27 minute video into what looks like a 13 minute video in which I rambled a little bit. So probably having decent normals on a low poly asset in 10 minutes less. Um, that's really helpful. So if you want to... Um, help the channel out please like and subscribe click the bell notification all of that um, get it for free name a fair price if you want to I think this will help a, help a few people out obviously for your hero assets this might not be the best way because um, you might have to uh, spend a little bit more time on your UVs spend a little bit more time on your topology but for a quick and dirty I just want this done. I think the results speak for themselves. That looks almost as good as it did in plasticity. The curvature is great. The normals on the surface are fine. And if you compare that to Blender, when we turn the data transfer modifier off, or even if we turn the decimate modifier off, even if we turn the triangulate modifier off, this is what it looked like originally. And this is what it looks like in Marmoset. So, really good. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and subscribe. Link for the add-on will be in the description. Ciao.